Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. Welcome back everybody. And George and I have a great guest tonight because you know, if you got kids, maybe it'd help if they could pay the rent. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's how I usually say it. Martha Khan teaches kids voiceover. Martha, how you doing tonight? Hey, great to be here with two of my favorite guys. My oh. name buddies. All right. Well, we're going to talk about getting your kids into voiceover. Should be fascinating. You all set, George? Ready to go here. Let's go. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, or whatever it is, wherever you are. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B. Yes. Any echo there? B. Oh, now you got that word. Where's your echo? There you go. By the way, we got a new intro coming. Jacob is animating a new intro. Awesome. I can't wait. You know, he's like. Uh, can I have a picture of your shirt? So, <laughs> like it. So I guess this shirt's going to be in the animation. Awesome! It's going to be that's fun. cool. I can't yeah. wait to see it. I can't either, and because we've had the same intro for about three years now, time for <laughs> I'm sure a lot time of to update it just a little. Going for a new one, yeah, that's true. Speaking of new stuff, uh, if you got kids, uh, tonight's a really great night to be watching the show because we've got a great guest who's going to talk to us about getting your kids to do voiceover. You know, I've had experience with that. I think you've had a little bit experience with it, George, just a little bit. Well, why don't we bring out our guest? Uh, Martha Khan is a voice actor, an experienced acting coach, writer, and producer who specializes in helping kids find their voice, build self-esteem and launch successful voiceover careers. Martha, welcome to voiceover body shop. Happy to be here. Okay, we need a little bit more mic input there. Okay, let me get a little, let me snuggle up to you. Okay. Almost loud enough. All right. So uh it, it's it's great having you here. I mean, we've you've been at our show, we've known each other for many years, but yeah, uh, you've been doing the uh the teaching kids how to do voiceover lately. How did you get started doing that? Well, you know, it's a cool story. I um I started teaching adults just because people wanted to learn how to do this thing. And so it started out with friends and more and more adults started wanting to do this. And one day I woke up and I said, you know, you have a bachelor degree in theater. Maybe you should teach kids. So one day I started calling children's acting schools. And this one coach said, you know, I'd be interested. So I invited her to one of my adult classes and she came to one night and she said, can I take the rest of the classes? And I said, sure. And she said, I would love you 
to teach at my school. Well, it turned out that this was not just an acting school for kids. These kids were very good. And a lot of them had SAG cards. They worked on camera and they were getting auditions for voiceover. And they did not know how to do voiceover. So they would get their copy and they would have their copy and they would be looking in the camera and they would lose their place and they would be talking to the camera. They didn't know how to do voiceover. So I started working with them and they started booking. And the acting, the owner of the school was very happy. And she said, I, I want you to come coach at my the school. acting. The owner of the school was, oh. what? hello. And um, so she brought me on board and I started coaching them on auditions. And we, the first demo I ever did, the kid got signed with Fox. The first, one of the first auditions that I did, uh, the little girl found the audition on, um, um, uh, oh, what's the daily? Um, you get old and you forget these things. Anyway, she got the audition and it was for the lead in Masha, in Masha and the Bear. And she's been wow. Masha ever since. Wow. So I thought to myself, I think I have found my calling. And so I worked for her for several years. And she said, you know, I think you should go and open your own school. And I was working for Celia Siegel at the time. And Celia said, Martha, you found your calling. I really think you need to get out of here and open your own school. And since then, I have had several kids. I've done uh, demos with them. They booked with agents. And I found my calling. And uh, I know I've got a couple of kids on here today that are with me, and it, it's just been the right thing. And I love it. The kids love it. And it's kind of a happily ever after story. Yeah. So, so you've, you've sort of found your voice with all this. You know, I have found my voice. I have found my niche. And who knows what will happen from here. But it's, it's a good thing. And uh, I now do demos. I've got my little Studio Bricks booth over here that Dan uh, George has helped me uh, put together. And we've got the right equipment to do demos right here. And I can even do demos with kids across the country. I work with kids all over. I've even had uh, a child in, in uh, Korea. So, Wow. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, I've got kids all over the country. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, you know, did you do what you, you've done voiceover yourself, obviously. I mean, how, how long have you been doing that? Probably as long as I've known you, which is, you know, a yeah. hundred years or so. <laughs> I started doing voiceover, oh, 15, 20 years. I mean, you know, I was the voice of Jenny Craig for nine or 10 years. Uh, you know, I had jobs like that, but, you know, I... I worked for Celia for seven years and still work for John Florian won't let me go. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's got you handcuffed over there at voiceover. Extra. You know, it's like, I still do stuff here and there for voiceover extra, but um, you know, I've done voiceover for 15, 20 years, but it never really stuck the way this has really manifested. That's and great. It just seems like this is my calling. Well, it, and that's the great thing. If you're good at working with kids, that's uh, that's a real plus. You know, having taught in the public schools and teaching kids, I know exactly what it's like. But are you teaching classes or are you teaching one on one? How exactly are you doing all that? I, I taught a lot of classes during COVID, uh, but I'm so booked with privates right now that it's. I'd like to get some classes started. But the one-on-one -on -one has really, really taken off. And so I need to find time to do some classes. Uh, my Saturdays have now opened up. So I'm looking to fill some Saturday classes for group. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so group, I'm open to group for all of you parents out there who want Saturday classes. And, uh, but we're, we're pretty busy with, uh, with uh, privates too. Yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Martha Kahn, and we're talking about getting your kids into voiceover. Uh, you know, I, I had my kids, you know, back when I had my, the studio in the basement back in Buffalo, I was like, 
get down here. I need you for something. And then one company just loved my, you know, Lewis's voice for, for uh, some kids stuff that we were doing. And, uh, and then, you know, I, I was hired to produce lots of kids. And so what I ended up doing was like, if you're a home, if you're a voice actor and you've got a home voiceover studio, how'd you like to get your kids to pay the rent? And so I auditioned a bunch of them, of course, because they had good home studios, because of course, you know, we had set them up. Uh, we got a lot of them going, doing it and, uh, you know, hopefully help their college fund at all. So, but, uh, it's, it's great if your kids can do it. What's your philosophy with working with kids? Because sometimes I, you know, they can be a little resistant to stuff. How do you work with them? Well, you know, I'm really glad you asked that question. I, I, I do have a philosophy about that because, you know, kids take piano lessons not to become the next grand piano master and they take art classes not to become the great artist voiceover is much the same i teach voiceover to help kids learn self-esteem that is my primary goal whether they want to be in voiceover or just play in voiceover my goal is to open up self-expression using their voice and their heart center so maybe they'll never be in voiceover, but I, I hope Natasha Marchevka is okay with me using her son as an example. <laughs> and if she's not, oh, well, <laughs> no, she's fine with it. She would tell me that her son would come out of the booth buoyant. And to me, for somebody like her son, who was kind of quiet, to hear a mom say her son was buoyant, for a quiet kid, that made all the difference in the world. That a, a kid is feels so good about himself. Whether or not now he happened to go on and make a demo and got hired by an agent. But some kids just want to feel good about themselves because they've had an opportunity to create using their self-expression. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Especially now, since we've all been so isolated for the past couple of years, uh, and kids are, ha kids have probably had the hardest time of all, you know, they've not been able to be together with their friends and stuff like that. So giving them something creative like this to do was probably, you know, probably, you know, it worked together. Well, did you find that business really picked up during the pandemic? Oh, it, it was the beginning of my you know, I left Celia two years ago. It was the beginning of my career mushroom. Yes. Yes. What, once again, if uh, you have a question for Martha about getting your kids into voiceover, uh, I don't know why, why do I have such an attitude about it? probably because of the response I got from my kids when they were doing it. I'm like, I don't want to do it. They didn't want to take direction. They didn't. They, it's like, they're not going to clean their room. What makes me think that they're going to do something when I say, okay, read it like this, do this, do that sort of thing. If you've got a question for Martha about getting your kids into voiceover, throw it in the chat room, no matter where you are, because there's a chat room in Facebook, there's a chat room in YouTube, uh, or just yell really loud. And I know Jeff will probably pick it up and get us the question. So uh, we invite you to do that uh, because I'm sure we're going to come up. You're going to come up with a couple of questions about your kids that'll make some sense. Uh, so when you're coaching, what do you cover with them? I mean, I mean, we've all probably taken some coaching from other voiceover coaches. How do you do what's different about dealing with kids and, and what do you cover? Um, uh, thank you. Uh, that's another great question. Um, when I moved to San Diego, it's a funny story because when I, I worked at Jenny Craig and I was a Jenny Craig counselor at one time and I had a client by the name of Penny Abshire and Penny. I said, oh, I've got a demo. Would you listen to it? And she said, sure. And she said, we just happened to do some classes here. And I started studying with Jim and Penny, and I studied with them a long time. And Jim has a book called The Art of Voice Acting, which is used in a lot of colleges and institutes. In which George and, and I are both quoted in. It's, it's a great book. It really is a great book. And he talks about the seven core elements of voiceover. And he uses the ABCs. Now, everybody uses 
well, a lot of coaches use the ABCs without knowing the ABCs, but it's audience, backstory, and character. Who are you talking to? What's going on before you open your mouth? And who are you? And so I teach the kids these very simple ABCs. And uh, it really helps them. A lot of kids that I teach that are, are uh, kids of voice actors, they've already got the rhythm. So they understand what's going on. So we talk about rhythm, pitch, pace, tempo, loud, soft, fast, slow, high, low, putting all those elements in. But when we also put in the elements of who are you talking to? What's going on in the situation? Who are you? All these things come together. And it really takes their read from sounding like they're reading to really sounding like you're talking to somebody. And it takes it from reedy to very natural. And it works. So that's some of what I do with the kids. We do a lot of improv. I have an acting degree. So I consider myself an acting coach. Anybody who says that they do voiceover but they're not actors I kind of say, hmm, you might want to take an acting class. You know, we're actors. Yeah, absolutely. And and the the first kids you were working with who were, you know, were professional actors and stuff. Did you have to teach them those same concepts or had they already been well trained? Or, you know, sometimes I wonder, you know, they throw kids on stage or they throw them in front of a camera. How much training have they actually had? Uh, cause sometimes they're just naturals at it. And then sometimes, you know, you got to learn, you have to learn some of the tricks of the trade. They were great actors, but they needed a new technique. So they needed a technique for the microphone instead of the camera, because we don't look at a microphone. And so I would have to say, no, looking at the camera, you're going <laughs> to lose your place. So it, it was just a shift. In focus, it's a whole different skill set. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Martha Khan. If you got a question about getting your kids in the voiceover, she's the lady to ask. I'll tell you something. You know, and it's interesting that you you mentioned that you know don't look at the microphone because the way you know I teach it is like keep it out of your you know out of your line of sight. Forget it's there because when you're acting, you're not you're not unless you're doing a a commercial where you're like addressing the camera straight on you're usually talking to somebody else and you don't want to use the, the, you know, treat the microphone like a camera and forget it's there because I find people, you know, tend to get a little bit louder when they're in front of a microphone. Do you find the kids do that a little bit or uh, they, they think it's a little bit different because there's a microphone there? Absolutely. Absolutely. They have to forget about the microphone. And I, I do love it when they they're at the microphone and then they, go like this because they love to look at themselves you know <laughs> really cute yeah i remember having a microphone on my desk when i was teaching and they would say does that work I'm like there's like no cable coming from it i mean where's it gonna go <laughs> that's just fascinating <laughs> Uh, what age range do you, are, are you most successful with i mean take you're probably taking kids from you know how old to how old and 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 you know what 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 do you, what's your favorite group to work with? Uh, well, I love all ages. I really do. But I I have had parents call me with four year olds who've gotten, you know, auditions, and you really, you know, there's no way around it. You have to feed them the line. You have to give them the three in a rows, and then they have to mimic you. There's just no way around it. Although, if they're, if they're good little actors, they make up their own three in a row. They get the hang of it and they make up their own. Um, my preference is that kids know how to read uh, because it's much easier once they know how to read. So usually they're starting around eight. And then I take kids up to, you know, I do have adults that come to me. I, I have a little codependent hard time saying no. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'll try to fit in anybody who asks me, um, but but you, know. you but you have probably have eight year olds who are playing four year olds. Oh yeah, yeah, and and you know uh, teaching them the slate is the first thing if they're already on camera 
because they'll say, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm eight years old. I live in da-da-da. And I'm reading for the role of. And it's like, okay, that's the first thing we're going to learn is how to slate. Because the slate is very different in voiceover. And, uh, you know, we don't say all that stuff in voiceover. So, right, yeah. right. And then, and in terms of how you actually get a kid to record themselves, clearly you're not teaching kids how to set up a microphone, how to operate a DAW, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you must have, you have to spend a lot of time working with the, the parents directly themselves. So you're directing kids in acting and directing parents in recording the kids acting, right? Which is why I hired you, George, to do a video on how to set up a home studio. And we did that. We did that workshop. And I do uh, send parents that home studio uh, workshop that we did to get the simplest way to record on an iPad with either an Apogee or an AT2020. Now that COVID is over, if they live in town, I'm going to try to do home visits to get their studio set up because that has been the most challenging. Uh, Dan and I are talking about maybe doing something together to help the parents because that's the most difficult part. Uh, For sure. If they have a home studio and it's a good home studio with the new Revelator, I actually can record them from their closet and I can record on my end and get a decent audition that's been really nice and they've booked from auditions from their house to my house how cool is that i didn't know you're doing that too yep and that's awesome yeah and now i'm doing demos from my house uh i can't do a demo from my studio to their house but i can i can direct from my studio to their studio if if they've got a good you know they rent a studio right once again, we're talking with Martha Kahn. I got a question for her. Throw it in the chat room. Um, Somebody so, just asked what a revelator is. Maybe we should. Well, yeah. George, explain to them what a revelator is and how Martha is using it. So a revelator, a revelator is an audio interface, the way, the way we connect the microphone to the computer. But it's an audio interface with a lot more function than a normal one. A normal one just takes the mic goes into the box and comes back out the, again into your computer. The Revelator does that. And then a lot more fancy features that allow Martha to have more control over what who hears what, what gets recorded, what comes out of the speakers, what comes out of the headphones, what does the person on Zoom hear when I hit play on my computer, et cetera, et cetera. So all that is set up using this device called the Revelator. And it is definitely more complex than like maybe a Scarlet 2i2 or something that you might be more familiar with. Yeah. And, and when, when, you know, and, and a lot of coaches are, want that sort of functionality that they can, you know, talk to the, you know, talk to their, the, the person they're teaching, record them on their end and, and that sort of thing. So it's, it's like just running, running a remote session with them and uh, which is, you know, and if you got great quality coming back, that works even better. So are you like doing it over Zoom or how are you generally working with kids? Yeah, yeah I'm doing it over Zoom. It, it's been really nice. I mean, it took, it was <laughs> intense learning it, but it was like teaching a kindergartner. <laughs> well, in some case, yeah, some of them actually are. Um, so um, what what age ranges are you, are you having the most success with? You know, who, who tends to really take to it the fastest when you're, when you're working with kids? You know, I have to say that the, the 9, 10, 11, they're really, they've been very successful. But, I mean, I have kids of all ages. Um, I mean, I've, I've gotten kids, gosh, I've booked at least five kids within both ears. I have kids that have signed with Stuart Talent. DeSanti, Bach, uh, I've got kids at Maverick, I've got kids, uh, I think I've got one or two at Coast to Coast now. Um, the kids have been really successful. 
This is a silly question, probably, but when do they transition from being child actors to adult actors? I mean, I know it's not just when their voice changes, if it's a guy or it has a lot to do with it, but when is it, when is it transition for a child actor? Oh, I would say probably in their early 20s. I mean, that would probably be an agent question, but I would say in their early 20s, you know, 18 to 20. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. You, have you, are there some that you started training in their late teens that you're seeing kind of crossing over? Has that happened yet? Or your kids are mostly younger that started with you? No, right now my kids are young. I haven't been doing it long enough. Mm -hmm. no. But uh, yeah, but I, I do have a fun story that um, I did have a young man. Actually, I don't know how old he is that um, came to me um, who was, uh, you know, I, out of school working who was a, an adult and he came to me and he worked with me for six months and i don't know i i would not have put my money on him you know but this guy he he wanted it and he wanted it and he he studied and he put his time in and he uh he, he worked with me for at least six or seven months and um you know, this is a story that that is a, a great thing for people. If they want it, never, ever, I will never tell anybody they shouldn't do voiceover. Because this guy, I, I turned him on to GBAA, and he studied with David, and David got him an L.A. agent, and he now has a, he has his SAG card. He's done union commercials, and uh, he is, he's now enjoying a, a a modicum of success and I am so proud of him. And, uh, you know, it's like never ever tell anybody that they can't be a voice actor because if you want it, you just go and do it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's always the thing. I mean, as, as I tell a lot of people, you want to be an actor or a voice actor, it's really got to be in your gallbladder. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's gotta be part of your journey to, to want to be, to really do it because otherwise it, because it takes time, it takes effort, it takes training. And again, it takes time. And if you don't have the patience to do it, if you're, you know, it's like, ah, this isn't working for me after two months, then it's not going to, it's never going to work for you. Uh, you've got, you've got to, it's got to be this constant drive to do that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, and hopefully you find that in the kids. So which it sort of leads into the question of, what are the factors the parents should look for when they're thinking about getting their kids into it? And, you know, and is it something they suggest to their kids? Is it something the kids say, Hey dad, Hey mom, I want to try this. What are some of the things that you've seen and, and what is it the parents should look for when they're think their kids might be ready to do something like this? Well, you know, it always starts with, wow, you have a great voice. Did you ever think of doing voiceovers? You know, the kids do cartoon voices. They do funny voices. They, you know, make people laugh. And so the next thing is, oh, you should be doing voiceovers. They all want to start out doing cartoons. And I start all my kids in commercials, at least four to eight weeks of commercials, and then narration, and then animation and character work. And then back to commercials before they can ever do a demo. And the demo is always commercial. Because I think that commercial is like the ballet of dance. You have to learn the fundamentals before you can do the animation stuff. Because we all know that animation is where you sweat. Animation is the hard part. And so you, you have to learn the fundamentals first. And, and if you're not willing to do that, you probably aren't going to make it in voiceover as a kid. Uh, that's just my philosophy. And so the ones who are willing to put in that kind of work, that are, are the ones who are going to stick through and make it. And so I, what, I, what I do is voice one, two, three is free. I have them do the whole course, have them make a demo, get on voice one, two, three, and do the work. Audition, audition, audition. They'll get all sorts of uh, auditions on voice one, two, three. And 
if they can do that and they can compete against all the other kids, then they can start to work. And that's my philosophy with them. Dan's kind of going, well, I don't know. Well, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. It's, you know, that there are far fewer kids doing this than there are adults trying to do voiceover these days. And as George and I will tell you, they're all coming to us saying, how do I record? Um, and, and of various levels of capability and skill of being able to do it. Kids sound like kids, you know, and if you, if you hear commercials, you can always tell it's a kid, but it's like, oh, this kid really knows what he's doing. Or they just sound really cute. And the, whoever was producing the commercial said, all right, this kid sounds cute. You know, they don't have to actually read it really well, but it, it still works. Um, but there's not as many kids in there. So the competition probably is not quite as stiff amongst the, you know, the, the, uh, the early childhood, uh, group as opposed to the, uh, the adults. Well, I think there's more competition now than we think there is. Okay. That's it's, it's gotten, you know, you look at the, the successful kids now, the glow girls, the sun home kids, uh, the, uh, the Lelena and, uh, the little joy voiceover. Um, oh gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, Lelena and, um, oh, I forgot her sister's name. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of kids now doing voiceover and there are people who want to know how they got started and then their friends learn. And so there's a lot of kids that want to do voiceover. The pool has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the competition has gotten stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. And my job is teaching these kids how to still sound like a kid and not be polished and not be smooth. And so I think that there's more than you think there are, especially there's a ton of e-learning for kids. Ooh, I, I know that one <laughs> that, because kids like to hear other kids teaching them stuff. It's fascinating. You know, I work on a big project like that once. Once again, we're talking with Martha Kahn and we're talking about getting your kids into voiceover. And uh, we're going to take a quick break here. And uh, if you've got a question for Martha, again, throw it in the chat room. I'm sure it's probably brought up a couple of questions, especially if your kids are watching this with you. Uh, or if you're like, hey, you know, then maybe they should be doing that. Anyway, we'll be right back with more with Martha Kahn. So don't go away. We'll be right back on VoiceOver Body Shop. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. You're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's your name, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. The Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone. Now, perhaps you didn't know this, but almost all of the equipment we use in voiceover was designed for making music. The VO1A is the only microphone specifically designed and tuned for voiceover. And you're hearing me on it right now. Now, obviously, the VO1A is very popular at voiceoveressentials.com, and Harlan has been running low until now. Harlan placed an order for a new supply of VO1As from MXL quite a while ago. Now, manufacturing them wasn't an issue, but getting them to the U.S. was, between COVID and shipping constraints and, of course, skyrocketing costs. Well, happy day, voiceover people. MXL informed Harlan that his order had arrived in Long Beach and was going through required quality control testing of each mic today. And by the way, although it's difficult, Harlan is keeping the price the same despite inflation and logistics costs. So if you've wanted one, now's the time to order your Harlan Hogan Signature Series VO1A voiceover mic today. Go to voiceoveressentials.com. 
Hey, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and we talk a lot in this business about moving forward with our career, getting more information. We often don't talk about simply getting started. It can be one of the most immovable objects in, in our life, getting out of our own way and just simply taking the first step. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, VoiceOver Body Shop, for some tips on how to get started in voiceover or to change something about your voiceover career or to increase your knowledge in a certain area, check out VOHeroes.com's Getting Started in Voiceover. If you go to VOHeroes.com slash start, you'll get all the information. Uh, it's really cheap. And I give you a lot to get started in the business, but you might also learn something if you've been in the voiceover business for a while. VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. And we're back with Martha Kahn. And uh, again, if you've got a question for her, I mean, I'm thinking about all sorts of things when it comes to dealing with kids. Uh, but if you have a question for her about your kids or maybe your neighbor's kids that are really annoying and you want them to go do something else like voiceover, you can tell them about Martha. So anyway, you've got a question, throw it in one of the chat rooms. And Jeff Holman is sitting back there somewhere and he is getting those questions to us. Uh, welcome back, Martha. We've got so many great questions here to go over, uh, starting off with, uh, from play the voice, real kids, VO family, obviously somebody you must know, uh, how can young kids develop a good ear for voiceover when listening to commercials, cartoons, toys? Is there a certain way to listen? And I, that's a, that's a great question because I think that's where everybody gets the idea that they can do voiceover. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I don't know how to answer that. Um, <laughs> I think one of the suggestions I heard once was um, when you're listening, try to mimic along with the voice as quickly as you can. Just go along with whatever it is you're listening to and mimic the voice. That's one of the techniques I've heard. Other than that, I'm, I'm just not sure how to answer that question. Um, well, do you tell them that, you know, you really, if you really want to see what it is that's going on out there, you've got to be able to hear and see other commercials and listen to the, you know, to the announcer, what is it that they're doing? That's different from everybody else. Why is it that they got hired for this gig? Yeah. Listen, 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 listen. The other thing that I always recommend is read aloud one to two to three minutes every day, because you have to be fluent in reading. And I think those people who read all the time are so much more fluent when they get copy thrown at them that it's easy to read. Um, and then if, if it is animation that's your thing, just listen to those animation voices and just see how fluid they are. Um, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the question. I'm looking for the question again. Um, yeah, I'm a sorry. A certain way to listen. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you get kids to, you know, what is there a technique to listening to, you know, that you teach them so that they can, you know, learn those things that the professionals are doing because that's what they want to do. They want to be professionals. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking I'm stumped on this question. Um, I can say that from a musical perspective, because I don't have an acting background, but I have a music background, that it seems to me with ear training, it doesn't matter what your training, what material, what the material is. It's just that you're training your ear to hear it. Yeah. And it's like speech is just another form of music in a way, right? It has rhythm, it has tone, and it has all these little elements. It's just we communicate speech differently than we communicate music but it's all part of the ear training and i think if your kids were, were listening to music young or just love listening to music encouraging them to sing along and match the music they hear the pitch the style of the music that's going to be beneficial it can't hurt right i mean that's just all ear training right i think that's what i was saying just 
listen to the commercials and just follow it along as you hear it. Follow it along. Get the rhythm, the pitch, the pace, the tempo. Um, I play a game with the kids. Every session that I have, we have a, a, a game called the or game. And I'll give them a sentence. Wow, it's a sunny day. How many ways can you say that one sentence? There's probably 10 different ways you can say that one simple sentence. And uh, so I think that that's a great way to learn the acting is improvising all the different ways that you can say one sentence with different rhythm, pitch, and pace. Because when you go into a studio, they're going to do a different kind of ABC. The other ABC in a studio, an ABC means give me three takes. And so you're going to have to be fluid in giving three different takes. That definitely comes with skill, right? When I hear a newer voice actor uh, that gets that direction and they give three different takes and each one is really similar to the last, you know, not much variation. That's something that's a sign that shows that somebody is kind of getting started and they don't know and realize what it is that they can vary. So that's, that's a big deal for sure. And, and, uh, that ear training is going to go a huge way into getting better at doing that for sure. And voiceover is, as you were saying, extremely musical. You know, and so I do teach them the word staccato and legato and mm. syncopation. You know, how do you say that staccato? How do you say that sentence legato? Put a, put a little a beat in there. A beat will make a huge difference in the sentence. And it will also, we don't just talk without beats. We talk like that, right? We take beats. So... It's developing your ear. And I also ask them to take their phone. All kids have phones these days. Take your phone and use the voice memo and listen to yourself and take a script. And I, I usually make kids do two reads on most scripts. And so take your, do your homework and do two reads and listen, develop your ear. Well, once again, we're talking with Martha Kahn. Uh, got a few questions here. If you'd like to get a question in, you still got time. So throw it in the chat room and uh, we'll get to that in just a second. You want to take Dr. Carlson's question there, George? Sure. Um, and I know that he happens to have a couple of young adults in his household that have been training in voiceover. Um, have you ever thought about writing your own book from what you've learned about working with kids in the studio? Not until just now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Oh, it's so much work, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> well, now you, now you have one person that wants to read your book. Um, there's another one in the uh, chat I just noticed from Patricia Andrea. Um, she says, my kid is watching me start now in voiceovers. And uh, like a lot of people in the family, unfortunately, <laughs> they don't quite take it seriously. So how would I go about presenting this to my kid? Who's 15? Uh, the, the child is not taking her getting into voiceover seriously. Yeah, apparently it's like, hey, I'm here doing it. You're watching me doing it. How do I encourage them to take it seriously? I, I don't know. If, if a kid isn't motivated. Yeah, really. How do you make them become motivated? You know, is that, I know it's not your job as a coach to, figure out how to motivate a kid who isn't taking it seriously, but do you have any, do you have any secret tricks, any sneak attack ways of doing it? Well, does Patricia want her child to be interested in voiceover or does Patricia want her child to take her being in voiceover seriously? That's an excellent question because, you know, oh, it depends on how you, how you interpret that. Right. Uh, so hmm. quite I think they're meaning about taking, getting the kid serious about learning voiceover. I, I want also want my child to be in voiceovers. Well, okay. Well, yeah. But do they is the question. Well, Patricia, contact me. And if your, if your uh, child is interested, we can do uh, an intro session and we can play. And if she likes it, we can do it. And if she doesn't, 
then we don't ever want our child to do anything that they don't want to do until they're ready. And if they're not ever ready, then we know that that's not going to feed their soul. Right? I, I can tell you from experience, my, my daughter, before she was, you know, when she was too young to really make a decision, we got her an agent doing on camera uh, what print and commercial, right? Being a cute little kid in a Halloween costume or a cute little kid in this thing or that. And when she got to the point where she did not want to go into the casting room, you know, like her mom would drive her to the, to the agency They'd be at the casting place. They'd be ready. She'd be paired up with one of the moms so they could do the reading. And when she didn't want to go into that casting room, she knew it was, she wasn't wanting to do it anymore. And we weren't going to make her keep doing it. So that's the tough thing. And now my kid is eight years older and I'm waiting to see when she has that motivation to want to do that kind of training again. And believe me, I'm, when I'm, Martha, as soon as, my daughter shows that interest and that aptitude to want to study. You're, you're absolutely going to be hearing from me because. Oh, wow. Yeah. We know Ella's got booth time whenever she wants. She's got the ear. She's got that. She, it's just, but if a kid isn't motivated to do that thing, you're going to be dragging them, kicking, not kicking and screaming, but just, it's going to be a constant uh, battle, you know? Yeah. Got a question here from Jay Horace Black. He says, hey, I know this is your focus on kids. However, your tips on the approach to an ABC or how they vary takes uh, or how to vary the takes. Uh, do you work with ki bigger kids in the age and the adult age range or just kids only? <laughs> Jay, we, we're no comment on what you think you're at, but <laughs> do you work with, with uh, older, uh, with adults? We won't say older people. Yeah, just you know, adults, not kids. I would love to work with adults. There's so many great coaches out there for adults. And I, I don't want to say that I won't work with adults, but there are great coaches out there for adults. And at this point, I, I got so many requests for kids that I'm kind of at a, a crossroads where I have to make a decision about, look, if you say you're con kids coaching, then maybe you should just stick with the kids and focus there and give, because I'm so booked right now that if I open myself up to adults, then I'm not going to have enough room for the kids. And so I have to, I, I'm being really honest with all of you guys out there that I really have to make a commitment to the kids and leave myself open to them. Because what happens, I've got at least five kids who are on network animations right now. And when those auditions come in, it's like I have to be available morning, noon, and night for them. Mm. Or, or they won't have time. I won't have time for them. And so uh, while I would love to say, yeah, I work with everybody because I'm just that way, I should probably say, you know, I need to make an age limit and cut it off at yeah. like, you know, Makes early, sense. early twenties or something. Yeah. Uh, now here, now here's a question from, from, from real kids again. It's like, because I think a lot of parents worry about this. And then I think some parents don't even realize they're doing it. It's what, what is a stage mom or dad <laughs> and how do you avoid being one? You, Chris, you're a stage dad. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great dad. He's got four kids and they're all amazing. So, you know, um, fortunately, wow. I don't have a lot of helicopter parents right now. Um, I had one parent that said, um, you know, you recorded her for 15 minutes and you want to charge me $100. And it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, there's time to set it up and to get the recording equipment and the, you know, the microphone ready and the this and the that and the that and all the rehearsal time that went into the 15 minutes of recording and, and you know, and then the editing that I did for that 15 minutes. And yeah, I'm going to charge you $100 for that. 
you know, and they never work with me again. That's, you know, a stage mom. But the, the, the parents who love and nurture their children and respect them for the art that they're doing and want the best for them, that's, that's a, um, a parent who cares about their children and wants to see them succeed. So um, I had a, a little girl, and the first thing she asked me was, is it okay to make mistakes? <laughs> and it was a little bit of a red flag. Since then, it's just been wonderful, and there was no stage mom involved. It was just her fear. But the parents that don't allow their kids to make mistakes that's a stage mom or dad. Because my answer to that little kid was, yes, 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 it's okay to make mistakes. And the more mistakes you make, the better it is. Because the more mistakes you make, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. We so, learn by, by making mistakes. It's as simple as that. Oh, and you can't be afraid. That right. is, uh, I, I think that's what kept me to, from doing so many things. It's just, just the afraid of screwing up being embarrassed of screwing up in front of people and, or whatever it is. And you can get, if you can get over that fear, I mean, the actors I know that are so successful, they mastered that a long time ago. They, that just doesn't get in the way yeah. of creating and, and playing. It's, it's, yeah. it's an amazing thing once you can get over that. Yeah. So does that answer the question? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it to me. All right, we got time for like one more question here from Mad Dog. Why don't you take that one, George? Yeah, Mad Dog, I think maybe related to somebody else in the uh, chat. Possibly. I'm putting pieces <laughs> together. Um, but uh, Mad Dog asks, hey, I'm 16 and I'm trying to get to voiceover. What are some pointers that can possibly help me out? And because I've been announcing football, track, and softball. So I'm a 16-year-old who's doing the announcing work. So he's got some time in front of the mic, or he or she has some time in front of the mic. That's and awesome. uh, what's the next? What's the next step for for Mad Dog? Well, that's awesome, Mad Dog. I think that's really cool. There's a big difference between announcing at games and and voiceover. So my suggestion would be to study, learn the basics of voiceover, uh, get a hold of me, um, and Let's have an intro session and have some fun. See if you like it. Learn the basics of what voiceover is uh, as, as opposed to announcing because the, um, the trend in voiceover today is not announcing, non-announcer. Tell much, me about it. <laughs> yeah, it's much more real person. So uh, talking and sounding real. Uh, and it, it's a great question. Great question, Mad Dog. Yeah. Well, Martha, it is always a pleasure to talk to you no matter where or when or how, but we really appreciate you coming on the show tonight. And again, if they want to get a hold of you, where do they go? Yes, I con, K A H N, at gmail.com or conkidsvoiceover.com. All righty. Well, Martha, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah. Look forward to seeing you in person soon when we, you either come up here, or we go down there, down the ocean side, but we'll run into you eventually because we're all going to get together for voice stuff very soon. Thank you guys so much. All righty. All right. George and I'll be right back to wrap things up and then re rack it for tech talk right after this. You're still watching VLBS. <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. 
Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources, like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, it's time to talk about our lovely sponsors, Source Connect. The Actually, the company that makes Source Connect, Source Elements, they have a huge array of so- software services. Some of them are softwares that you license and download on your computer. Some of them are standalone applications. Some of them work on a web browser, and they all have different features. But the bottom line is all of them allow you to collaborate with other voice actors, or more importantly, the studios that record you from anywhere. As long as you have a great sounding home studio that works well, is reliable, and you can get a good sounding quiet recording whenever you need it, that means you might be ready to take a step into buying or getting a license to use Source Connect. This is going to allow you as the actor to connect into a studio anywhere in the world and they do the recording while you just do the acting. It's just really cool. It's so fun to be able to just forget about the recording side of it. All you have to do is make sure your gain and your microphone level is set correctly and the director or whoever's on the other side listening to you We'll, t- we'll do the rest. They'll make sure the audio has been recorded. You might even get to hear the way it sounds when it's finished. Um, and it's a really cool technology, but you have to be ready. And if you want to be ready, if you want to be sure your studio is ready, if you head to georgethe.tech slash SC for Source Connect, there's information on there and you can also get support. But if you know you're ready, then just head over to source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial. You just have to have a good, modern, working Windows or Mac system, good audio, quiet room, and a good internet connection. And you could be doing sessions with studios all over the country and even possibly the world. Anyway, thanks so much to Source Elements for your support of the show. Let's get on out of here and so we can come back with Tech Talk in just a minute. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. All righty, yeah. And again, if you want to get in touch with uh, with <laughs> with Martha, right there it says yes, Icon Productions at gmail dot com. So uh, I'm not sure if you have to use the big I, you know, an uppercase I, or just a little I with the dot, but that's where you can find Martha if you want to have work with your kids and see if they can get into voiceover. Well, this week is, uh, <laughs> we, we ran through this one and, uh, thanks again to, uh, to Martha for, for joining us on there. Um, who do we have on next week? Well, it's going to be tech talk number 76 as we are starting our, tw- our 12th year of doing voiceover body right. shop. <laughs> yeah, believe it or don't. You know, and we haven't gotten tired of each other yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen sooner or later. But, um, but you know, again, we're we're thrilled that you're out there and listening to uh, and watching our show and uh, getting the information you need to uh, get your sound right and to make sure that you are sounding like a professional in the way you voice act. So that's why we bring on great people like Martha to teach us a little bit about voice acting. In this case, your kids had a voice act. Anyway, uh, who are our donors of the week? All right. It's so great reading the same names over and over. That means yeah, but there's some new ones here, though. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Well, I'll start this time and okay. with Jonathan Grant. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Thomas Pinto. Shelly Avellino. Hey, Shelly. George A. Widom, my dad. Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Rader, Greg Thomas, uh, a a doctor voice, which is Nathan Carlson, Antland Productions, that's Uncle Roy, Shania Pennington Baird, Martha, Martha Khan, Khan. <laughs> Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, and Sandra Manwiller. Uh, we really appreciate uh all your, your donations to the show. It allows us to maintain the technical excellence that you now see 
every week on this show. No mistakes at all. It's tight. It's just the way it's supposed to be. Perfection. Flawless. Absolutely. Hey, joining our uh, join our mailing list too, because uh, you get updates on what we're going to be doing next and uh, who's coming on the show, and you get to see my brilliant artwork every week, which is always fun. Uh, George, I keep getting these notifications that you're holding office hours, and I keep wanting to jump in. Tell us about it. Oh yeah, so if if you've been a client of of, of George the Tech, you will be invited to join our private office hours in uh, a room in. Uh, clubhouse, which has been working pretty well. Uh, we get to just talk off the cuff, really keeping it focused on tech stuff, but it allows anybody to just get some more thoughts addressed. It's sort of like the after hours of this show in a way. We get to talk beyond the time that we have limited here on our show and just get into more geekery or just answer questions. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I've, I've always wanted to own a, a geekery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An artisan organic <laughs> geekery. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Oh, we have more. VoiceOver yeah. Extra. <laughs> Source Elements. <laughs> VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and uh, JMC, JMC Demos. Demos. All righty. Jeff Holman, thanks for your work in the chat room tonight, getting their questions to us. Sue Merlino, who is the one that makes sure that nothing goes wrong. And if it does, it's George's fault. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, we have to thank Lee Penny just for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for our show this week. Stay tuned for Tech Talk if you're watching us live, because that's when the real fun stuff goes, when George and I just go at it about way, the way to properly record your voiceover audio. So if you've got a question for us, throw it in the chat room now. Anyway, that's going to do it for this show. Our thanks again to Martha Kahn. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. C. What is going on there? All right, we'll see you next week. Stay tuned for Tech Talk.